joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now we'll just stop reading there. And as you look at these, I've often thought, you know, especially those first three, you think, man, that's, that's just what I need. Love, joy, peace. I, I can't imagine anybody who doesn't want uh, those things. But I don't find too many people probably getting very excited about the fourth one. Long-suffering. Oh, that's, that's what I want. <laughs> um, and yet, each one of these are fruit of the Spirit. And they're not so much what we i got to say this right now. It's not so much what the Holy Spirit is giving us as what the Holy Spirit is working through us. Fruit of the Spirit. It's, what we're, it's the product of our life as Christians. Uh, we need to be producing love and joy and peace and, and yes, long-suffering. Others might look at that and say, oh, I can't live those first three, but I can live the fourth one. Man, I can suffer for Jesus. <laughs> I don't know what your attitude might be this morning, but uh, long-suffering. It's definitely a part of life. Uh, Maybe sometimes we might have to leave off the long, but uh, it just literally means long temper. It means enduring provocation. We've all experienced it. Um, steadfastness, perseverance. Sometimes we use the word patience, although I would have to say there, there's another word for patience. Uh, patience and long-suffering are, are very similar and have Maybe long-suffering might be a, a, a part of patience. I'm not sure. Uh, they're, they're similar. But long-suffering uh, is basically self-restraint in the face of provocation. The opposite is anger. It helps me when I'm looking at a subject to see opposites. Uh, the opposite of long-suffering is a anger. And we associate it with mercy. Y you know, someone's provoking us, and, and we withhold our wrath. <laughs> you know, we, we show mercy. Uh, patience is, is a little different. It's not so much provocation, it's more the circumstances of life. And the opposite of patience is despair. Uh, we live in a world of despair, don't we? And uh, suicide and uh, things like that are, are very common. It's associated with hope. As Christians, we don't have to despair. We can have hope. We have hope in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it, it's interesting, theologians generally say that they don't associate patience with God. Now, the reason is God never gets impatient. <laughs> God knows the future. I mean, he's, he's not worried about the future. However, it does talk about him being long-suffering over and over again. And, and in fact, the, the greatest example we have of long-suffering is, is the Lord himself. Uh, I'll give you a, a couple of verses. I've, I put a few things on the screen, I hope, this morning. Uh, Wednesday nights have been handing out a a handout, but this morning we'll just let you view that there. Psalm 86 and, and verse 15 says this about the Lord. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. Now, our God is, is just full of long-suffering, uh, full of mercy. In Isaiah 48 and uh, verse 9, it says this, this about the Lord. In fact, God says this. The whole Bible is that, isn't it? Uh, Psalm, I'm sorry, Isaiah 48, verse 9. For my name's sake will I defer mine anger. That's a pretty good definition of long-suffering, isn't it? For my name's sake will I defer mine anger. And for my praise will I refrain for thee that I cut thee not off. <laughs> you know, God could just judge us right now and completely. But God shows mercy. God is long-suffering to us. Uh, you see this many times in Scripture. One that the Bible talks about is in the days of Noah. If you've ever read Genesis, uh, you know that you know, what a wicked time that was. Probably almost as bad as today. <laughs> uh, no, the Bible said it was, it was terrible. The, the thoughts of their heart were only wickedness all the time. A uh, very wicked time. And the Bible says in, in 1 Peter 3, verse 20, that um, the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing. Now, uh, to me, the significance of that was God waited and waited while the way of mercy was opened up. 
God doesn't just say, do right. He, he gives us a, a way of mercy. God gives us a, a, an escape. Uh, he waited while that, that way of escape was, ma was made. God is long-suffering. Uh, God doesn't do anything in a hurry. Uh, you see it time and time again with Israel. If you've read the Bible, you know, man, uh, Israel is so inconsistent uh, with the Lord. In uh, Psalm 78, I'll read several verses here, uh, in verse, starting in verse 40, talking about Israel. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy, how he wrought his signs in Egypt, and it goes on. Uh, you know, they, they just were so ungrateful and ungodly. And yet God is long-suffering. God is still dealing with Israel. God is still going to fulfill his promises uh, to Israel. Uh, in Numbers, I don't think this is in my notes, but uh, uh, Numbers chapter 14, he gives us a good illustration of this. This is when Moses is asking God for mercy for Israel. Uh, Numbers 14, uh, start reading verse 18. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy. Forgiving iniquity and transgression. Uh, verse 19, pardon, I beseech thee, the, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. Uh, verse 20, and the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. You know, God doesn't have to show mercy, but he just is full of mercy. He's long suffering. It's the greatest example that we have is, is God himself. And you know, today as well, it's true. Uh, we live in a wicked world that treats God abominably. I mean, you, you know it, you look around. If they're not ignoring him, they're ridiculing him. And God is, is so merciful. God is so long-suffering. I mean, he could stop their heart. He could stop their breath. He could stop the world. Listen, if the world stopped, we're in trouble. Uh, what's that thing called when, when you stop and things continue on? I mean, there's a law about that. <laughs> uh, boy, uh, we'd be in trouble. And in 2 Peter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Listen, the reason we're not judged is not that God isn't paying any attention. He's not slack, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And really, that's his purpose in long-suffering. God's long-suffering is to bring us to repentance. Uh, like in the days of Noah, God wanted them to repent. But it was only Noah and his family that found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Um, and what an amazing thing. God wants us to, to come to him. In 2 Peter 3, verse 15, it says, that, Account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. God wants us to, to repent and, and to turn to him. And his motive is that he loves us. In 1 Corinthians 13, you know, the love chapter, charity suffereth long and is kind. And that's a picture of God and of Jesus. Uh, we see long suffering in the Lord. And uh, we should learn from his example. Uh, the next time you're tempted not to be long suffering, just remember what God has done for you. I can guarantee you, no one has wronged you as much as you've wronged God. If you don't believe that, you, you get in your Bible and, and let the Holy Spirit convict you, because it's true. No one, I don't care who it is or what they've done, no one has wronged you as much as you've wronged God. And God shows mercy. God is long-suffering to us, not willing that, anyone, that any should perish. Now, you see human examples of this as well. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, one that comes to my mind is Joseph in the Old Testament. You remember Joseph, whose brothers sold him as a slave? And I know some of us have been tempted to do that to our brothers or sisters, but uh, they, they were, the choice was, will we kill him or sell him? Man, it, it was a, that was a rough family. Um, and the thing that makes it long-suffering is that Joseph later on had opportunity to pay them back. He became the second ruler in the most powerful nation on the earth at that time. Wow. Uh, you, you, you don't want to wrong. You, you, know, you don't want to be at odds with that fellow. Uh, when, when his brothers came, you probably know, I hope you know the story. 
there was a famine and his brothers had to come to Egypt to get food? Well, Joseph was the one they had to speak to. They didn't recognize him. He looked like an Egyptian. He talked Egyptian, whatever they, they talk at that time. Uh, they didn't know it was him, but he knew it was them. And he was merciful to them. He didn't pay them back. Uh, when their father died, they thought, oh, man, we've had it now. Joseph is going to wreak havoc on us. And uh, here's what Joseph said. He says, fear not. Am I in the place of God? As for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Joseph was long-suffering. He could have gotten even, but he showed mercy. Uh, that's a good example. Uh, another good example is David and Saul. You remember when God had rejected Saul as king and he, he'd anointed David as the next king? Boy, Saul didn't like that. And Saul gave David a hard time. He chased him. He persecuted him. And every time David had the opportunity to hurt Saul, he held back. He said, I'll not lay my hand on God's anointed. Uh, David showed mercy. He was, he was long-suffering. Uh, you see it in, in life. Uh, you see it in, in modern times. Uh, we had a man used to come and preach at our Bible college named Carl Hatch. And by his testimony, he said before he was saved, uh, he was an awful man. His wife was a Christian, and he, he was terrible to her. And yet she, she lived uh, what, the, what the Bible teaches in uh, 1 Peter 3 when it says, uh, Wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Conversation is the, the way they live. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. And, and you know, it was true. His wife was lovely. She was a lovely Christian woman and treated him with respect and dignity, even though he wasn't worthy of it personally. And he, he got saved. And God got a hold of him. God got even with him. He made him an evangelist. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's a, a testimony of long-suffering. And that's multiplied probably hundreds and thousands of times in different people's lives as, as they trust the Lord, even though they're provoked. They don't respond in kind. In, uh, in life, probably the greatest example of long-suffering is in the negative. We see it all around us where people don't suffer long. Uh, it, it's a common thing for people to cut others off. Uh, you know, they're, they're wronged and they say, well, that's it. Uh, no more of that. Uh, that's not long-suffering. And, and the reason people don't respond with long suffering the Bible shows us very clearly is because they're not motivated by love uh, the Bible says in uh, Psalm 27 verse 10 when my father and my mother forsake me then the Lord will take me up you know the reason that's true is because God loves you uh, unfortunately sometimes people aren't going to have the love uh, that they should fathers mothers children friends, and so on. But Jesus never fails. God is always the same. Uh, we were hearing a, a man preach on DVD the other day, and he, he, he made this statement. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more. There's nothing you can do to make God love you less. <laughs> you see, God is love. He's constant. His love doesn't change. We change. We're like the moon. He's like the sun. Always constant. Uh, God loves us. God is long-suffering and, and merciful. I want to give you four things this morning that I think will help you uh, with this, this subject. I want to encourage you. Uh, this is God's fruit that we're talking about. And as, as Christians, we want to encourage the fruit of the Spirit in, in our lives. And, and the first thing I would encourage you to do is to choose to be like Jesus. Now, I guess these... Um, choose to be like Jesus. Choose long-suffering. Uh, you're going to have choices in life. And, and realize it is a choice. In, in Colossians chapter 3 and, and, and verse 12, he uses a phrase. This is used several times in, in the New Testament. Put on. And then he lists things. He, he says, put on uh, bowels of mercies. Kindness. Bowels of mercies are a heart of compassion. Uh, kindness humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. 
forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Do ye. God is saying, put it on. That, I mean, it's a choice. When you have a choice between long-suffering and anger, God says, put on long-suffering. Put on mercy. Choose that. It won't always feel like the right thing. It, you'll get people that will encourage you to be not like Jesus. <laughs> you have every right to get even with them. Listen, that's not what God says. God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. You leave the vengeance up to him. He'll do a lot better job of it. Uh, choose long-suffering. And the main benefit is you'll be like Jesus in doing that. In 1 Peter, we're, we're going to be looking at tonight how it says that uh, Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. And, and then it says, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Listen, Jesus has all power. Of course he could get vengeance if he wanted. Uh, watching something in the news the other day, an old, old fellow, a workman, shoved him down. And then uh, as he was on the ground, he slapped him. Uh, boy, I'd find that hard to take. But Jesus took it. Jesus took it for us. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. That's long-suffering. That's, that's mercy. Uh, it's a choice. In Ephesians 4, he says, Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. I'm talking about the, the first step here. The first step is to choose to be like Jesus. Choose long-suffering. Now, it doesn't mean we never rebuke anyone. Uh, the Bible says in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and, and verse 2, Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering, there's that word, and doctrine. Uh, there's a time to, re to rebuke each other, you know, to say, to, uh, to talk to someone about something that's wrong, but he says, do it with all long suffering and doctrine. Do it based on God's word, do it based on love, do it based on mercy. Uh, choose long suffering. And remember, it's a choice. Don't be so childish as to think that others are responsible for your character. Stop and think about that a minute. I mean, you expect it of a four-year-old, maybe even a ten-year-old. When you say, why would you do that? Oh, he hit me first. I mean, that's childish, isn't it? But I see 65-year-olds saying that. I see him going to prison for that. Uh, Say 65, because that's how old I am. Uh, we don't need to be childish about our character. We need to understand the character, uh, the suffering of life will bring out the real you, the real me. Man, that's disappointing sometimes. And, and yet, the Lord knows. The Lord's never surprised. And we need to allow God to be developing the fruit of the Spirit in us, His fruit in our lives, His actions in my actions, long-suffering. And the first thing, step, I think, is a choice. That's what I want. That's what I want. Choose long-suffering instead of anger. Choose mercy instead of payback. You know, there's whole societies based on payback. You don't want to live there. Choose love instead of hate. The second thing is, not only do we need to choose to be like Jesus, we need to learn to live like Jesus. The, the problem many times is we don't know what it means. You know, we say, oh, I, you know, we sing, I would be like Jesus. And we don't read our Bible enough to know what that means. We don't know the picture. Listen, the fruit of the Spirit is a, a pretty good picture of Jesus. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, that's a good picture of Jesus. Uh, the Gospels, the Old Testament, the New Testament. Hey, I think the whole Bible. Uh, it tells me what Jesus is like, who Jesus is. I need to learn to live like Jesus. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, and uh, starting in verse 9, Paul is writing to the church at Colossae, and he says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, 
and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. Well, that can't be right. No, it's there. Long-suffering. As I was studying this this week, I thought, man, I have a long way to go. Uh, you know, I think we, we start off where we don't long suffer. <laughs> you know, we got no mercy. You know, we're, we're into the vengeance. But then the Lord gets a hold of our heart, gets saved, and he begins to change us, and, and we begrudgingly suffer long. We stew about it. But I think God wants us, I know, God wants us to get the place, to the place where we can suffer long with joyfulness because we see God has a purpose. God is doing something not only in my life, but in the lives of others. Listen, what a testimony it is when someone provokes you and you respond like Jesus. Now, if you're like me, it's, it's not always you and it's not always me, but it should be. We need the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, well, we like those, long-suffering. People are going to see Jesus in us through the fruit of the Spirit. We need to not only choose long-suffering, choose to be like Jesus, but we need to learn to be like Jesus. Uh, we need to study the scriptures. There in Colossians verse 9, it talks, it talks about being filled with the knowledge of his will. In verse 10, it talks about increasing uh, in the knowledge of God. That needs to be us. We need to be growing people. Uh, it's his fruit. Uh, there in verse 10, being fruitful in every good work, walking worthy. It's his power, verse 11, strengthened with all might. You say, oh, I can't do it. Well, God can do it through you. Strengthened with, with all might. And it's for his glory that we do it. It's not just to make your life better. Uh, listen, suffering for the Lord will not necessarily make you feel better. <laughs> all right? Uh, there's people every day who die because they're following the Lord. 2 Peter 3.18, he says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. We need to, to choose to be like Jesus, and then we need to, churn, to learn to be like Jesus. The third thing I would in, encourage you to do, this is, is similar, is choose love. Choose love. Uh, I mentioned the verse already, I think, in 1 Corinthians 13. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity suffereth long and is kind. You know, the fruit of the Spirit, love, that's the first one. Joy, peace, long suffering. In Romans chapter 12, there's a great series of verses in, at the end of Romans chapter 12 about our dealing with provocation and uh, the difficulties of life. I'm just going to read two of the verses. Romans 12, verse 20, he's been talking about vengeance and, and so on, how you know, it's not ours, it's the Lord's. Here's what he says to do. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. Now, who's he talking about? The one that's provoking you. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. That's not an expression we really understand nowadays, but in the days before gas and electric, uh, when you didn't have a fire going in your place, especially in their society, you had to go to a neighbor. You, they didn't have matches. They, didn't, you know, they had to go and get, get some coals. And they would take a pot and they would get some coals. They'd put it on their head and they'd trot back home and, and get that fire going again in their own home. It was a blessing to get coals of fire in your head. He's not talking about hurting somebody. He's talking about blessing them. And, and then here's the verse I wanted to get to, verse 21. Be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good. Kids, you'll experience this at school. Adults, you'll experience this at work and in the home. Listen, don't be overcome of evil. Don't be like the ones that you so hate how they treat you. Be like Jesus. Jesus said this in, as he was preaching and, and teaching in Matthew chapter 5. I'll just read verse 44. I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and, and persecute you. You know, we need to, to choose to be like Jesus. We need to learn to be like Jesus. And then we need to live like Jesus. That's what love's all about. Love is living like Jesus. Let me tell you a couple of things about love. 
Love doesn't walk away. Aren't you glad God didn't look at us and say, I'm, I'm sick of them. I've I'm, I'm got nothing to do with them. I'll make a different planet. I'll make a different people. He didn't walk away. He came and he stood for us. I just see it so much lately. It says the hard-heartedness of people. They see a need. They see someone who's, who's down in their sin and they say, I'm sick of them. I'm, I'm out of here. Folks, love doesn't walk away. Love doesn't escalate the problem. You know, when we won't show mercy, we make it worse. You know, when someone hits us, our, our response many times is to hit them back twice as hard and twice as many times. Love doesn't escalate the problem. Love doesn't dishonor the person. Like the illustration I gave you, uh, Carl Hatch was not an honorable man, but he was a man. He was a husband, and his wife honored him as that, a creation of God. She treated him uh, with respect that came from her, not from him. Love doesn't uh, dishonor or disrespect the person. It suffers long and is kind. Uh, we need to choose to live like Jesus. And then the fourth thing, it's so simple. We need to pray. <laughs> In Colossians, when we read there, Paul said he, he, he hadn't ceased to pray for them. Paul was praying for them. Now, like we read in Matthew, you know, Jesus said, you know, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for them. God wants to, they're a person too. They're a person in the throes of sin and rebellion against God. Uh, I read, a, uh, I forgot to bring my, my note on it, but I read about a couple uh, in, uh, they were missionaries in the Philippines during World War II. Yeah, just a young couple. She was actually expecting, I, I can't remember if it was their first or second child. And uh, the Japanese put them in an internment camp. Uh, so they were prisoners of war to the Japanese in the Philippines, uh, missionaries from overseas, and were treated terrible. One of the guards was particularly vicious. And they found out later that the day that the paratroopers rescued them, he had planned to kill them all. He had uh, petrol uh, around the camp, and he was gonna, gonna burn them alive. Well, some years later, he was found as the groundskeeper at a golf course in the Philippines, was arrested and, and eventually hung. But while he was on trial, he said that he had trusted Christ. And he said the reason he did it was the kindness that the missionary had shown him while he was a prison guard. See, charity suffereth long and is kind. We don't base our character on what others do to us. We base it on what God has done for us. We base it on who God is. Uh, we need to learn to pray for others. Pray for those that despitefully use us. We also need to pray for ourselves. Uh, you know, we, we need prayer, and uh, it's all right to, to pray for yourself. In uh, James chapter 5, I'm going to read you a couple verses from there if you wanted to turn there. Uh, verse 13, he says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. It's all right to pray. <laughs> it's all right to pray for yourself. Uh, when you're in trouble, man, call out to the Lord. Uh, Long-suffering. Uh, he, he talks in that chapter of James about different ones who were patient and long-suffering. Uh, let me read James 5, verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. And he, he gives the farmer as an illustration. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Then he gives another example, the prophets. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Think of those prophets, you know, God's messengers, God's voice, and yet many of them were so afflicted, killed, persecuted. Uh, they did it uh, with long suffering. Then he says, here's a Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. If you know the story of Job, oh, he, he suffered terribly, and then God blessed him twice as much in his, his latter days. Uh, we need to be uh, long-suffering. Uh, we need to be trusting the Lord. Uh, there's many things that we can do. We've looked at four this morning. We need to choose to be like Jesus.
That, that should be our goal. Then we need to learn uh, to be like Jesus. We need to live like Jesus, love like Jesus, and we need to pray. Um, our greatest example is the Lord. Uh, God's long suffering has given you the opportunity to be saved. It's true. 2 Peter 3 9, one of the verses we, we started with. Uh, the Lord is long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, God has put up with us because He loves us, and, and he, has, uh, uh, he has a goal to reach us. Uh, he wants us to be saved. Uh, if you're not sure about eternity, today's the day to find out. Don't presume on God's mercy and long-suffering. There is coming a day of judgment. Trust the Lord. If you're a Christian, suffering as a Christian gives you the opportunity to be like Jesus. Listen, don't waste it. Choose uh, to be like Jesus. Uh, don't give in to anger. Don't be overcome of evil. Give in to love. Uh, let me encourage you this morning. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Long-suffering is a good fruit of the Spirit as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Their heads bowed in, in an attitude of prayer. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. Maybe there's folks that you just terribly resent because they've afflicted you and you need to show mercy. Maybe this morning you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. Uh, Today is the day. Whatever you need, the Lord can help you. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your word that speaks to our hearts. Lord, help us to understand your mercy. Help us to respond to your grace. Lord, help us to be like you. Father, if there are those here this morning that are not saved, I pray that your Holy Spirit would draw them to yourself. Help them to see how they've wronged you. Help them to confess and, and to repent of their sin and to trust you as Lord and Savior. Father, help us to live like Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing uh, page 57 in our, our songbook there. Uh, I think I've got the page right. Cleanse me. Uh, search me, O oh God. I, ho I hope that's the right page for this, this songbook. Uh, as we sing, maybe you need to come and pray. Uh, maybe you need to, to come and have someone show you from God's Word how to be saved. Uh, whatever your need might be, uh, let's stand together as we sing. And uh, you come as, as God would lead you. Sorry. Sorry.